welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, and I'm so happy that Lamplighter is finally getting some much needed character development after he was skipped over in the comics. Thank God. Oh no! Lamplighter, how we barely knew thee. However, we pieced together everything that we could collect on the character, and throughout this video, we're going to be going through the ins and outs of his backstory, powers, and more. There will be some spoilers here, so if you haven't seen up to episode 7 of season 2, then I highly recommend that you turn off now. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for videos like this every day, and smash that thumbs up button if you love the boys. With that out of the way, thank you for clicking this, now let's get into Lamplighter. Okay, so when we first come across Lamplighter in the comics, the character is crawling around in his own feces, mumbling about his fire. Before we ever met him, Lamplighter had been killed by Colonel Mallory, and thus he was in a zombie-like state. Though we haven't witnessed it in the show so far, in the source material, Compound V has several negative properties to it, including an almost resurrection-like quality that fires up the neurons in one's brain at the instant of death. This means that, Though the soups are technically dead, they're reanimated and are capable of moving around and talking. However, one shouldn't view it so much as them having a life, and due to their lack of brain cells caused by their death, they're very much brain dead. That's why, when you look up quotes from the guy, most of them are, are just stuff like, Well, where my fault? Where my fault? It sound, sounds like some of the comments I get. Haha, <laughs> got you suckers, I got you again. Got you! <laughs> now this resurrection process very much allows Vought to make it seem like their heroes are invincible, and even in the face of death, that they'll always come back. We've seen things like this carried out in comic books, like the death of Superman and Batman Nightfall, in which the characters were seemingly defeated, but they came back even stronger. Yes, I know, Batman didn't die in Nightfall, so you can stop typing right now. Now, Vought follow a similar sort of procedure, and they come up with elaborate backstories on how the characters died, and then were able to return. However, it's all just a PR stunt, and after the heroes are paraded around for a couple of months, they are quote-unquote retired by the company and cast to the side. Now, what we do know about Lamplighter is that, like the rest of the Seven, his mother was given extreme amounts of Compound V during her pregnancy. This procedure was finessed during the Second World War, when Vought worked with the Nazis alongside Vogelbaum to find a way to make the Aryan Superman a reality. Vought, of course, fled to America, taking his procedures with him, and as we say, the rest is history. Now, in the source material, we learn very little about Lamplighter, and predominantly, his story is told in flashbacks. Lamplighter was actually the member of the Seven just before Starlight, and she was brought in to replace him. It was primarily during 9-11 that his downfall first started, and if you don't know, in the comics, during the historical event, the Seven were brought in to stop a plane from crashing into the towers. This was supposed to be a big PR stunt for the group, in which they would miraculously save the day, however, in the end, things went disastrously. Similar to the plane rescue scene in the show, Homelander ended up causing a lot of damage to it, and it crashed into the Brooklyn Bridge, killing thousands. The terrorists were blamed, but the CIA knew the truth, and thus they started to close in on the group. Vault wanted nothing more than to have the Seven working alongside the military, as it would massively raise their profile, but the CIA attempted to blackmail Vault in order to stop this from becoming a reality. This motif was of course adapted in the recent boys season, and similar to how it played out on screen, Lamplighter refused to be blackmailed. He stalked Colonel Mallory, and then killed his grandchildren when he was out of his home. The show actually follows a similar pattern to this, but where it differs is that Lamplighter didn't intentionally do it, and he has remorse over the killings. Because of this, in the series he stepped out of the limelight, and he ended up working at the Sage Grove Center for Stormfront. In the source material, after the death of his grandchildren, Mallory is of course devastated, and he realizes that things have gone too far, and will continue to escalate. Thus, a ceasefire is called between the Seven and the CIA, and together, the groups meet in an Air Force hangar. The boys arrive to find the hangar completely red from top to bottom, and we learn that it's been painted with the blood of an army platoon in order to intimidate them into agreeing to the terms of the deal. Both the Seven and the boys want a ceasefire brought about, and to show their goodwill towards the situation, the Seven actually hand over Lamplighter to Mallory. Mallory ends up beating the crap out of the character, before shooting him, 
and then throwing him out of an airplane. Vought then take his body and after V resurrects him, they parade him around for a while before locking him in a dungeon. Starlight then replaces him in the group and as punishment, she's forced to clean his cell, which we find him climbing around in, covered in crap. Yikes. Now where the show differs from this is that Lamplighter just goes to the Sage Grove Center and he's used by Stormfront to burn the evidence of her experiments with Compound V. When the boys arrive one day and he and Frenchie come face to face, he begins to atone for what he did to Mallory's grandchildren and decides to join them in their quest to take down Vought. In episode 7, we learn that he's planning to testify against the corporation. However, because of the actions he takes, he never gets to the courtroom. We discover that, in the show's universe, Lamplighter was pretty much forced into being a suit by his father, who wanted the fame and fortune that came with this. Lamplighter even remarks that his dad was happy when he burned down their home, and it clearly shows what kind of plans he had for him. Lamplighter filled the role brilliantly, but as we mentioned, he just couldn't take the fact that the CIA had dirt on him. His father's view of him being a hero is what likely made him think that he should try and cover it up at all costs, and this was of course a grave mistake for him. In the end, Lamplighter just wanted to be a hero, but he ruined his chances, as did most of the seven. It's okay, Starlight. I still love you. He set himself on fire in front of the Statue of the Seven, which was a reference to the Burning Monk, which, in some ways, was a protest for everything that he stood for. I actually think that the character might even come back at some point, and I would love to see the resurrection qualities of V in the comics brought across the show. Lamplighter's body is, of course, still in Vought Tower, and I think it would be amazing to go seasons down the line and have the boys break in there, only to find him crawling around like how he does in the comics. That's pretty much all you need to know about his history and comic book origin, and as for his powers, they're a lot more straightforward. Now like all those injected with V, Lamblighter has enhanced abilities such as increased strength and durability. This means he can withstand much more damage than a regular person, but he's nowhere near as invincible as Homelander or Stormfront, who can have her bloody tats burned and be fine. Burn our bloody tats! Now his main ability is Pyrokinesis, which allows him to control and manipulate fire. Lamplighter can take tiny flames and turn them into engulfing blasts, but he has to have a source for this in order to yield it. This is why he carries around his gigantic staff, and within this is an almost ever-burning flame that he can pull from. Now Lamplighter is actually riffing on a number of comic book characters, including Green Lantern and Thor. The former is because he, he, well, he uses a lantern and, and dresses in green, and the second is because his weapon is very much part of his getup. With Thor, it is of course Mjolnir, which I always pronounce wrong. Mjolnir! And with Lamplighter, it's it's a, obviously it it's his Lamplighter. Now I was really shocked that he went out the way that he did, and I hope that we do get him back in some form or another. I absolutely love Sean Ashmore, and seeing him playing pretty much in opposite to Iceman from the X Men was a brilliant move by the creative team to parody the superhero genre even more. Anyway, that's everything that you need to know about the character. But if there's anything that you'd like to add, then make sure you comment below and let me know. If you enjoyed this video, then please drop a thumbs up. And make sure you check out our breakdown of Stormfront, which is going to be linked at the end. We go over everything you need to know about the character, including her origins, powers, and more. So it's definitely worth checking out if you want something else to watch. If you want to support the channel and get to see content early, then please consider clicking the join button below. You can also come chat us on our Discord server, linked in the description, or heavy spoilers on Twitter. Thanks for making it until the end of the video. You've been the best. I've been Paul. I'll see you next time. Take care. Peace.